the Lord chose him for himself as high priest, and opening his treasure house, made him rich in all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Pope St. John the 23rd have given a living example of Christ, the Good Shepherd, to shine throughout the whole world, grant us, we pray, that through his intercession we may joyfully pour out an abundance of Christian charity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who am telling you that if you have yourselves circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I declare to every man who has himself circumcised that he is bound to observe the entire law. You are separated from Christ, you who are trying to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. The word of the Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. And I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, because I seek your precepts. And I will delight in your commands, which I love. And I will lift up my hands to your commands, and meditate on your statutes.
God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O you Pharisees, Although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil, you fools. Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Pope St. John XXIII was known for his personal sanctity and for his good humor. Just after he was elected by the cardinals in the conclave at the Vatican, he was walking not too far from the Vatican, and he overheard a woman as he passed by. She said, he is so fat. And the, the new pope turned around and he said to her, Ma'am, the holy conclave isn't exactly a beauty contest. On another occasion, he was asked by a reporter. She said, Holy Father, how many people work at the Vatican? And he thought for a moment and he said, about half. He, would, he was born in the far north of Italy, and he, to a poor family. He was the third of 13 children, and he, but he strove to maintain this spirit of poverty throughout his entire life. In his last will in Testament, he would say, he would say, I was born poor, but of humble and respectable folk. I am particularly happy to die poor. I thank God for this grace of poverty to which I vowed fidelity in my youth, which has strengthened me in my resolve never to ask for positions, money, or favors, never, e never either for myself nor for my family and nor relations." Before he was elected pope, even in his early formation as a seminarian, he would leave his, the seminary and he would go and assist in the war effort in World War I. He served as a medic and then as a chaplain. Later on, after his ordination as an archbishop, he was a Vatican diplomat, both to Turkey and to Greece. And it was during this time, during the spread of the Germans and the Nazis, that he worked to save the lives of many of the Jews during this time, working to get them papers, to get them visas, so that they were able to leave and escape from Europe. Yeah, after this, he was officially recognized as one of those non-Jews who risked their lives to save the Jews. Then in, as the Holy Father in 1962, he worked to intercede during the Cuban Missile Crisis when the Russians were putting 
nuclear missiles in Russia, just off the coast, or not too far from the United States. At this time, he had, at the height of the crisis, he, on Vatican Radio, he addressed both Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Russians, and our president at the time, John F. Kennedy. And he said, we beg the heads of state not to remain deaf to the cry of humanity. Peace, peace. It said that someone went to Nikita Khrushchev and said, the Pope is looking for peace, and why don't you be the man of peace? And Nikita Khrushchev replied, okay, I will be the man of peace. And a few days later, he began removing the missiles from Cuba. Uh, then the Holy Father, Saint John the Twenty-Third, not long after this, was recognized and received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the United States' highest civilian reward, recognizing his work for peace and freedom and for the good relationship that he maintained between the Vatican and the United States. May the Pope, may Pope Saint John the Twenty-Third, known as the Good Pope, Il Papa Buono, help us to strive for personal holiness and work for peace in the world. Pope Saint John the Twenty-Third, pray for us. Please stand. Together, let us present our petitions to the Father, confident in, all, in His all-encompassing love. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit direct them in their service to the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected and appointed officials, may God work through their efforts to recreate a more just and peaceful society. Let us pray to the Lord. for our community, and especially for Anne Deersing, for whom this Mass is being offered. May the Eucharist fill us with perfect grace while increasing our hunger to be in ever more perfect union with God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, may they soon find peace and joy in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. God of glory, we place these prayers in your hands, trusting that you will grant us what we most need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, 
and make what is offered for your glory in honor of blessed John the 23rd a means to our eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John the 23rd, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. <clears throat> for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the 23rd, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, stir in up in us that fire of charity with which blessed John the 23rd burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Oh. 